Yes, a very good afternoon and many thanks for keeping it NTV Uganda. My name is Romy Busika and of course I'm here to talk about a very pertinent discussion and that is customary land registration. We do know that customary land accounts for 80% of the land in the country and is governed by various laws including the national land policy, the land registration and the land regulations and also um, we also do have the Land Act. Yes, those are the, some of the laws that are governing the customary summary land registration right here in the country. But we want to expand more on these issues. Today we are here to have a discussion on current registration efforts on registration of customary land and also assessing whether the practice and the legal framework actually speak to each other. We do know in 1975, yes, President Idi Amin actually proclaimed and made all the customary land uh, to the state. It all belonged to the state, meaning if you had some land that you were squatting on, it became for the state. Yes, but then in 1995, when President Yorib Kautam Seveni came around, we saw land being given back to the peasants. You could actually own land under the customary uh, land registration. So, but then, what is the situation now? What is the update? I do have Esther Obaiko. She is an eager land governance expert with the Intergovernmental Authority on Development. I also do have Mr. Olekwa. Yes, Abdul Nasser. He's the Principal Lands Officer with the Ministry of Lands, Housing and Urban Development. We also have Sara Kula. Basangwa. She is a private land consultant with whom we are going to be expounding on the uh, customary land registration in Uganda under the theme Rethinking Customary Land Registration. What are the emerging legal issues? Let me start with you, Ms. Sarah Kulate Basangwa. <clears throat> what is the value of having a customary registry? Let's start there. Thank you very much. Mm. As you've rightly said, 80% yes. of the land in Uganda is customarily owned. Mm. Only 20% is registered. Mm. In 1900, when our colonial masters came and took over the land, mm. all the land then was customarily owned. For a century, we've managed to have 20% registered mm. and 80% is not registered. Mm. And that 80% is the one which is sustaining the economy. Mm. Uganda, you know, is an agricultural country. And it is that 80% where agriculture is being done. So we need to improve, to give them security. So meaning before the colonialists came in 1900, you had uh, almost 100% of the land in Uganda under customary. 100%, not right. almost, 100%. Mm. All the land was customarily mm. owned. But different cultures, different customs w uh, pertained. Mm. In the northern Uganda, it was more tribal and clan. Mm. Then when you go to eastern Uganda, it became more to tr to clan mm. and then to individual family up to ch up to Chigezi. Mm. So before the so colonial before the colonials came, it was a hundred percent customary land. land. Yes. Then when they came in 1900, we saw the Kabakas, the chiefs, taking over most of this land. Explain what was happening during that period. At when they came over, uh, they entered into an agreement mm. with the <coughs> with the chiefs agreed. then, mm. Buga the, the the kingdom of Buganda, mm. and they introduced Milo land and freehold the freehold of the colonial of the colonialists as they know it that mm. is ownership in perpetuity mm. customary there is also ownership in perpetuity but this one was different because then they required evidence of ownership a certificate of title so registration entails to have a certificate mm. of title 20 percent of the land in uganda is registered and their titles 80 percent is not registered no mm. titles mm. Mm. go ahead mm -hmm. Now, as you rightly said, mm. 1995, mm. customary registration, customary ownership is now legally recognized mm. as a tenure in its own right. And the constitution says an owner of a customary land can acquire a registra registration. Mm. Therefore, it is important mm. that this owner, who has never had a document of ownership recognized by the state, should be facilitated to get this document mm and also be at par with the others who have enjoyed all mm. the benefits of land and registration. And indeed, registration of this customary land began in 1998, if I remember very correctly. But then I was on the view because I saw they were issuing the certificate of customary ownership, yes. which only um, actually acknowledged the fact that you are the right owner, but it didn't protect you from another individual who would actually come with another document. 
purporting to be the rightful owner of uh, that same land. So there was an issue of talking about how individuals could be awarded a certificate of, of customary ownership. Yes, a certificate of customary But title. the law, again, goes on to say that an owner of a certificate of customary ownership <coughs> can have it converted mm. to a freehold title. Mm. So we wanted to know what is the difference between the uh, certificate of customary ownership and a certificate of customary title. A yes. certificate of customary ownership mm. is that the customs and norms of a mm. given area recognize you as the owner yes. under the customs of that area, mm. of a piece of land. Mm. And uh, depending on the customs, the customs might be recognizing you as an individual or as a family or a clan mm. or a tribe. And the customs prescribe how the owner would use the land and pass it on mm. to another. Mm. Yes. So to just recognize you as the owner, but you yes. it wouldn't give you the rights. With the user rights mm. according to the customs, mm. but not the user rights according to the Registration of Titles Act. Mm. The Registration of Titles Act gives individual ownership, and an individual will give will will have the the mm. right to take a decision whatsoever you want, mm. as long as it is within the law. Mm. So ma meaning <coughs> registration or data on customary land is scattered. It's it everywhere. And that's why we are talking about a customary registry. So what would be the immediate value of such a customary registry? The immediate value is that at least data would be known as to who mm. has the decisions to make mm. uh, regarding a particular piece of land. Mm. There would be a security against further party claims. Mm. Because even within the custom, even within a customary setting, an uncle, an aunt can claim as against a child. So this time round, they would know that this minor child is the owner of this mm. land customarily. Or this auntie or uncle is holding in trust mm. for these minor children. Mm. And then under custom, we would know that the, <coughs> the owner has these many spouses and the spouses have a right to use this land mm. according to the custom of a given area. Right. Yes. All right. That is Sarah Kulat Basangwa. She is a private land consultant. Let me also bring in someone from the Ministry of Lands, Housing and Urban Development. And that's none other than Mr. Abduna Sir Olekwa. Very good morning once again, sir. Definitely. Yes. We'd like to know what your ministry is doing in this regard when it comes to the establishment of a customary registry. What are you doing as stipulated um, in the national land policy? Okay. Uh, mm. thank, thank you very much. Uh, before I go into what we are doing as a ministry, I'd like to... Uh, first, give some background. Please do. <coughs> uh, the the position that we have reached mm. uh, concerning the customary land registry uh, stems back from the need to document customary land rights. Uh, as you're aware, as, and mm. have, as you've correctly stated, mm. uh, customary land registration didn't start until the coming into force of the Land Act. Mm. Uh, that is uh, immediately after 1998. Yes. Uh, that was because, as Madame Sarah said, mm. uh, th this big chunk of land, uh, which comprises 80% of Uganda's land tenure system, okay. was never registered, was never recorded, was never the rights on that land were in abeyance. They were just hanging there. And mm. uh, the majority of the people, mostly agricultural farmers and uh, li li livelihood, uh, people who get mm. their livelihood from this land, mm. had their rights and, 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 and interests mm. not registered on this land. So in 1998, uh, the law was brought, the Land Act, to ensure that these land rights are recorded. The system of registering them is put mm. in place. Mm. So they introduced something they called the Certificate of Customary Ownership, yes. wi which, mm. which is issued at the sub-county by someone called a recorder mm. at the sub-county mm. or uh, a town clerk in a town council. Mm. <coughs> but uh, as you've correctly stated also, we realized that information was not centralized. Mm. We realized that uh, the, stat the data that uh, comprises most of these uh, registration mm. efforts were not, w w they, 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 they were not in one place. Mm. So we came up with the national land policy to ensure that we create a registry where all this data and information on uh, customary land registration be centralized in one place where uh, if, if, if we issue a certificate, Banks can access that information. Okay. Uh, uh, Third-party th 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 uh, th people who are interested in these transactions mm. can, uh, and, and also to enable uh, subsequent transactions. Mm. So we proposed under the National Land Policy of, of 2013 mm. to create that registry. Mm. Now, the government has, uh, has both medium and long-term efforts 
that are in place to establish these things. Mm. So in the short term, we want to first harmonize all the data that we have collected over mm. the years. Mm. Uh, we started issuing uh, certificates of customary ownership in Kasese in 2012. Mm. That was our pilot. Uh, to date, we have issued in uh, almost uh, 15 districts across the country. But we are, we, have, we, are, we are still remaining with one major problem, harmonizing all the information so that it can be regarded as, mm. as, 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 as reliable as the information that we have on the other land tenure systems. Mm. Uh, for, for information on the other land tenure systems, uh, that is Milo, Freehold. Mm. Uh, okay, back in the day. <laughs> back in the day, Crown was <laughs> Crown, oh, yeah. Crown was yes. uh, what we used to call public land. Then yes. it became former public land. It okay. disappeared altogether mm. into the four land tenure systems. Yeah. But uh, the other three land we tenure have systems, the freehold, yes. freehold mm -hmm. Milo, mm -hmm. and leasehold. leasehold. Yes. Those, as Madam Sarah stated, those comprise twenty percent mm. of all registered land in Uganda. And those are the ones which have concrete information on. Now, you, you have a viewer who is watching and thinking, why are they clamoring for the registration of customary land? Do they want to grab all our land? Th those are some of the questions going into the minds of the viewers. And I'll take you fast forward to the colonial times, yes. why they actually decided to uh, expedite that process of registering customary land. 1900, oh, remember very well, R.C. Allen, yes. uh, she was instituted to actually register all the land within Uganda mm -hmm. to a certain who was owning which land and where. Mm -hmm. Maybe people thought, this is being done uh, maybe for Ugandans to get a share of the land, all of us. But then they wanted to actually give out this land to individuals who would do the bidding of the colonialists. That was the reason why they were registering customary land, so that this um, land could be realigned so that the individuals, the locals, could do the bidding of the colonialists. Now, for the part of the government, why are you expediting this process to register customary land? Yeah, for the simple reason, we need to document. Mm. Uh, th these land rights. Uh, you will agree with me that without any form of mm. land registration, mm. uh, the land rights would be lost. Uh, they could easily be grabbed. Land can easily be grabbed, susceptible to, 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 to land grabbing and evictions. So uh, the first thing is to prove that mm. you are the owner of the land by, proving some, by, by showing some documentation. So government, first and foremost, is harmonizing all the data mm. that we have on customary land registration. We are integrating all the data that we've collected onto the land information system. Mm. And secondly, we are, we are fast tracking something they call the systematic land adjudication and certification. Mm. Uh, this is a program government started way back in 2005 mm. to ensure that we survey all the land in Uganda. And the biggest problem is that mm. all our land is not surveyed. Mm. That's, that's, that's where the biggest problem is. So if we can... 80%, yes. 80%. <laughs> so if we can survey all the land, put it on a cadaster, and we know all the land is mapped, all the land is demarcated, mm. then we come and ascertain whose interest is whose, so that we manage to uh, give people documentations. So, uh, but in the long run, uh, the, the government is uh, amending the law, because to create a customary land registry, mm. you need a law. You need to have a law in place Indeed. which supports mm. this customary land registry. Mm. As, uh, as it stands, the, the, custom, sorry, the Registration of Titles Act mm. only provides for registration and issuance of titles mm. on the three land tenure systems. Mm -hmm. The, the, the mm. other land tenure systems, mm. the, sorry, the customary land, customary land tenure, the only supporting uh, registration effort is the certificate of customary ownership. And there's <laughs> been this age-old debate about whether customary land tenure is inferior mm. to the other three land okay. tenure systems. Yes. So uh, to, to, to remove that, uh, that, that illusion, yes. that... Uh, that kind of uh, a, a belief, mm, mm. we in government propose to elevate customary land tenure to at least the same level with the other mm. land tenure systems by creating this registry where mm. we shall issue what you mentioned, the certificate of customary title. Yes. But for that to happen in the long run, we have mm. to amend the law. We have to start with mm. the Land Act. We have to amend the uh, Registration of Titles mm. Act. And to some extent, we have to amend the Constitution because all these things are provided for starting from the constitution and then uh, into the mother law, which is the Land Act mm. and the other uh, enabling legislation. Just to put your uh, thought into perspective, meaning that this, this uh, let me see, the certificate of customary uh, ownership, the CCO, is not as effective or does not offer protection to the holder as it is. That's why we are amending the law. No, no, no. no. 
to create a registry. Yes. For now, what we have are uh, sub-registries. Because and I was reading, the National Land Policy was saying the, uh, the certificate for customary ownership is too weak. And that's why we need to be talk, talking it about is, the customary, certificate of customary title. True. It is yes. perceived as weak mm. because this, it doesn't offer the same band of rights Indeed. as yes. a certificate of title. Mm. Uh, because the certificate of title entails so many things. One, the land has to be surveyed, uh, like scientifically surveyed. Mm. Uh, in customary land registration, we only demarcate using the traditional mm. means. The uh, trees, you come, the, you come the hills your, and yeah, so forth. You come with your, <laughs> your mpanyi in and Uganda. And that avocado, uh -huh, that's where yes, my land goes. Yes, you follow the traditional <laughs> boundaries, the landmarks. Indeed. Say, yeah, my land stops at that river. Mm. Uh, and so it's not scientific enough mm. to have, but uh, we, are, we, 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 we have started using uh, scientific means to I capture see. these uh, land demarcations. Mm. And also, as, 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 uh, as you mentioned, mm. The customary land registration is at the sub-county level. So access to information is a bit limited at that level. Mm. It's done by people who are almost part-timers, uh, the sub-county chiefs. They're already employed by the local government. Mm. So we cast on them an additional burden to help us in registration. So we need to create a registry. To centralize the to system. To centralize the system, which will be able to be accessed at all levels, at the sub-county level, the district level, and at the national level. Right. Can someone comes to the Ministry of Lands can access information on land registration. Well, oh, thank you very much for putting that into yeah. insight. Abdul Nasser Olekwa, he is the Principal Lands <coughs> Officer at the Ministry of uh, Lands, Housing and Urban Development. We also do have Esther Obai Cole. Yeah, she's a land governance expert with the Intergovernmental Association on Development. Uh, very good morning, Esther. Morning. How are you doing? I'm good, thanks. Thanks okay, for having me. Indeed. Let's talk about some legal issues that are emerging when it comes to customary land registration. What are some of those emerging legal issues? Uh, let me just take the cue from uh, Sarah and um, mm. Abdul Nasser mm. to say that maybe the complexity starts from the Constitution mm. that uh, put customary tenure as now legal form of ownership in Uganda. Mm. And to contextualize that is maybe to say in most of the world, customary tenure is informal tenure, which means it has not found its ambit in the legal framework of a country mm. in the constitution. <coughs> in Uganda, it's different. It's a right just like any other tenure. So it puts it at that level, at constitutional level, yes. uh, by the constitution. <laughs> Secondly, um, when you then come down, you know, still at constitutional level, a fundamental problem that exists is uh, the whole <laughs> land vesting in the people, in the citizens. Previously, land vested in the state, you rightly said that. Nin 1975. 1975. Yeah. And that made it so easy for the way the land governance in the country functioned. It was elitist, let's mm. agree. Mm. Sarah might disagree, but it was elitist. <laughs> the 20% were mm. chiefs, were the, the royal, you mm. talked about crown lands, yes. you talked about public lands, so it was very elitist. Mm. Leaving out the rest of us, ordinary Ugandans, mm. as uh, squatters or... You lived on the land as long as the state didn't want it for any other purpose. Mm -hmm. Okay, So it was a cliché. And so how our system has evolved has been that cliché mm. system for only that 20% of the land holding. All right. It did not expand. Huh? So the 80% of us remained vulnerable. Mm. So now you layer that with saying land belongs to us, the mm. people. Mm. How do we hold that land as the people? And that's where the fundamental question starts when you talk about customary land. How now do I hold it? Mm. Yeah? Yes. We have a registry. Remember, it was held by the state. It guarantees to give me good title. But now you're saying, I, the person, have and I have good title. How? How does that happen? It's a legal question that we need to bust. Mm, yes. We haven't yet. <coughs> we are thinking about it. Um, so translating that into the Land Act became quite problematic. And that's why you find what Abu Nasser is talking mm. about, that the Land Act then kind of degraded the customary tenure it to a did. certificate of customary ownership, mm. not a certificate of title, mm. and said we still use our rudimentary ways of measuring. We were wondering what you'd call that in a local language. In mine, probably it would, it would be <laughs> Aigira Lupok, you know. <laughs> you just go and uh, do the migrola, you do yes. the stones, you <laughs> yes, do, yes. you know, rudimentary way of doing it. And um, At that tree atop the hill, that's where my land stops. Exactly, and so <laughs> at that point, you're thinking, Indeed. okay, I have rights, I am the owner of this piece, and anyway, the constitution tells me I am mm. the owner and nothing can happen. Then you're there dreaming that you're the owner, even with your certificate of customary mm. ownership, Somebody comes from Kampala wielding a certificate of freehold mm -hmm. title. Mm -hmm. At that point, who mm -hmm. is who? 
where, where does Abdul Nasser's registry, yeah, that yeah. one at the local level apply? And that's what it the does national does land policy is talking about. Exactly. Mm. So now the mm. national land policy says, no, 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 we need mm. to revise because this is not working. Yes. It's actually not providing the protections that the constitution thought would be provided. Mm. Can we go back to the basics? We need the customary certificate of title which would be the same as freehold. So Sarah talked yes. about the transition in the Land mm -hmm. Act of when you have a certificate of customary ownership, you can then upgrade it to yeah, a freehold. To a freehold. Mm. The land policy is saying, no, 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 you actually can have your customary certificate of title. title. Yes. What does that look like? No one knows, and that's where we are at Indeed. right now. Yes. Those are some of the difficult <coughs> questions we are working on, and there's a small working group thinking about it and breaking down these ideas <coughs> and to, to make it, to bring it mm -hmm. home for people to say, let's stop struggling <coughs> about um, certificate of customary ownership. Yes, it's a good first step, but doesn't give you the protections as a freehold title gives mm -hmm. you, as a leasehold title gives <coughs> you, as a milo title gives you. We're struggling with banks. Mm -hmm. They cannot take this as collateral. Why? Why over the last mm -hmm. 10, 20 years, a certificate of customary ownership cannot yet be taken fully as collateral and of the same value. I, indeed, and some individuals will call me and say, Romeo, I don't even have a title. But then I have this simple certificate, a customary, a certificate of customary ownership. And I was like, that's more than enough. And they'll be like, but <laughs> the other person has a title. Exactly. <laughs> so <laughs> when we come to issues of compensation, yes. you, the bulisa, the oil thing, <coughs> you get compensated for what value? Somebody with a title is compensated a lot higher than a customary ownership. So there are all these inequalities that we must bust and find a solution to. Mm. Yeah. So meaning the people in Hoima mm -hmm, did, didn't get the compensation that they were they looking for. They got a road for. deal, basically. Did, not as yeah. mm. if they had titles. Mm. Had they have titles, mm. they would have been given they would a have lot more. more value mm. than they did. So you get... In, in the of by call, because that corresponds with the theme of this conversation, uh, rethinking the customer land registration, what are the emerging legal issues? And what do you think are the emerging legal issues, especially when it comes to the uh, establishment of a customer registry, Esther? I think fundamentally, one is the whole question of survey. Are we able to survey the yeah. whole country? And we want to do it precisely the way the freehold and the leaseholds mm. and the milos happen. That's a question. The mm. cost of that is very high. And so we have to find, simplify it in our legal framework mm. to do a fit for purpose approach that will be uniform across the country. Indeed. Pilots have been done. Uh, Abnasa spoke a little bit about mm. those, but they have not been consistent in terms of how do they capture data, what are the measurements, what's the, mm. the quality of product we get. And the mode. So, so mm. And the mode, that mm. has been a problem, one. And there's no law to back that up. Yeah, so it's... <coughs> what do you call, what's the word, clandestine? Cl clandestine. <laughs> <laughs> That's what's going on right now. Indeed. Because there's no mm. legal framework to govern that. Our mm. survey act does not allow mm. for that. Mm. Two, the registration process. How do we register? How, mm. What does the customary registry look like actually? Mm. How should we frame it? With that comes the whole issue of assurance of title. You know, maybe Sarah will speak more into assurance of title, but the whole question is, if... I got a certificate mm -hmm. of customary title, and it's not good title. Who compensates me for that? Those are questions that are unanswered. Will government compensate me for that like it does on, mm -hmm. the, other on the other tenure? Mm -hmm. So th that must be resolved. Mm -hmm. The other is just the frame. What document do I get? What does it look like? Mm -hmm. What gives it that value? We need to think through that and write it down mm -hmm. and really prescribe. We cannot go the extreme way of freehold, milo, and leasehold. It must be simpler mm. to be able to make people um, more attracted to registration, but also to reduce the cost of it. Mm. Because just a small registration take costs you what? Um, a subdivision. The, the survey component uh, is the most expensive. Yeah, so we have to find ways of simplifying those issues. Uh, uh, but and but that's what we're working towards yes, now. As a legal expert, um, I'm looking at uh, someone out there, if we are talking about 80% unsurveyed land, meaning many of the people are having certificates of customary ownership. So moving forward, before we get a law in place that could protect these individuals, what, what, what else could they do to I protect think, themselves? I think your protection, whether you have a certificate of customary ownership or not, you're already protected by the constitutional provision that mm. you're an owner. Mm. It doesn't matter whether you have it or not. 
So, um, and not a very huge percentage right now has yeah. a certificate of customary ownership anyway. But, yes, but remember the National Land Policy is already warning me and telling me there is a scenario where another person could come with a bigger document. Which is true, even now. Mine, yes. And test me off the land. And of course the law clearly states that, that it can happen. So and, in that and event it that it happens, happen. what do I do? It does happen. And you, probably, I don't know, it would be a court issue yeah. of saying I was here and I was not here. And what evidence do you have? Mm. I think the whole question is evidence. What evidence do you have that you were there mm. before that? I, w I mean, for me, the best examples I can give is Karamoja, mm. where I know for sure that people have titles to lands, to massive lands, mm. where there are owners, customary owners. But somebody has a freehold title. And we know that they and do have titles. Mm. Yes, and uh, when it's time for speculative mining, this title shows up. And all of a sudden, the community is so vulnerable. What do you do at that point, apart from a court case? Sada Kulata Basangwa, you're a private land consultant, an expert in this. Uh, what would uh, the immediate person who is watching right now, Moni, uh, this show, and TV Uganda, do in the event that another person came with a freehold title, yet they have a certificate of uh, customary ownership in their hands? What would that person do in that event? It stresses the need to have a centralized customer uh, registry mm. for customer ownership. Mm. Because once it is centralized, mm. they will be talking to each other. That no one will be able to, <coughs> mm. to title a leasehold, mm. a freehold on that land. Because the information will be following each other, reading to mm. each other. Um, once we do it, the register customer mm. the land systematically, systematically, then government's hand would be in it. Mm -hmm. That they have followed the process, they have ascertained it, they have assured it. Therefore, at the end of the day, they will be able to assure the title mm. that once something is bad on the title, government will compensate mm. the person who is losing. Mm -hmm. That is the assurance of title. Yes. Sarah, what about, about the establishment of a tribunal, a temporary tribunal to help uh, solve these cases as we wait for a national law before it comes uh, to prevent people from being evicted from their land that they own rightfully? Could we set up a tribunal that could help these individuals? I would rather that mm. we dwell a lot in registration because once the registration mm. is done systematically, mm. adjudication is done well mm. and the registration, mm. then the land disputes will systematically mm. reduce, drastically reduce. But yes, the tribunal would come in because the normal legal system is b b b is tedious, mm. it is elitist, Indeed. the poor normally loses. Mm. So yeah, the tribunal would come in and help. It's really tedious because I was... But registration mm. would help Because of before this whole conversation, I was you know, doing my own investigations and people were telling me a tribunal would go a long way in helping alleviate this problem. Because before we talk, ab we talk about a customary registry, we need to first come up with the law. Isn't that right, Esther? Sure. And that would take a lot of time. So meaning a tribunal in this case mm -hmm. would go a long way in helping alleviate the problems that we are seeing um, at this opportune moment. And I could see Abdul Nasser <laughs> Oleko <laughs> no, itching to say something but could we go for a short break and then return? All right, you're still watching NTV Uganda. We are talking about customary land registration. How best can we rethink and come up with better models to register land within this country under the customary land regime? My name is Romy Busiku. Let's take a breather. We'll be right back. Welcome back and many thanks for staying with us right here on NTV Uganda. My name is Romy Busiku and of course we are here to talk about customary registration, rethinking the way we've been registering land right here in Uganda, especially when it comes to customary land. And what are the emerging legal issues? Esther Obaiko, she is a land governance expert with the Intergovernmental Association on uh, Intergovernmental Authority on Development. We also do have uh, a principal a lands officer, yes, from the Ministry of Lands, Urban, uh, there's the Ministry of Lands, Housing and Urban Development, that is Mr. Olekwe Abdul Nasser. He's not alone. We also do have Sara Kulata Basangwa. She is a private land consultant with whom we are having this conversation of how best we can rethink with about other strategies to register customary land right here in Uganda and what are the emerging legal issues. Abdul Nasser Olekwe. You had something that you wanted yes. to talk to me about <laughs> before we went for a break. Yes. Yeah. Uh, I was just building earlier on the conversation mm. that we were having. Mm. Uh, we are creating a customary land registry, but we are not reinventing mm. customary land. Mm. Uh, customary land has existed for centuries, uh, since time immemorial. Mm. It has predated everything that we know, mm. and it's governed by certain rules, mm. certain uh, norms, 
certain customs. So you can't just put up a tribunal out of the... Building. No, no, you, you can put up a tribunal. <laughs> but uh, what uh, point I wanted to emphasize mm. is there's need to document these customs. Mm. There's need to know what customs apply to where. Because mm. this it's not a uniform system. Mm. Uh, customary land held in uh, Acholi By is, the way. is not mm. the same does not have the same rules. Because it's awarded according to the norms and culture of exactly. that particular jurisdiction. Exactly. So, yes. uh, for example, in, uh, in West Nile, where, mm. where I come from, mm. uh, most of the customary land is held by clans. There's no particular individual, mm. individually owned uh, customary interest. Mm. If you go in the West, uh, in, uh, in Ankole, in, uh, in Chigezi, customary land is owned individually. So mm. there are different rules that apply mm. in different places. But also I wanted to emphasize the role of traditional institutions in uh, managing this land. Uh, cust the customary land is basically, uh, uh, it, it entails two aspects. Mm. Uh, there is that uh, aspect of the communal land ownership governed by rules set down by traditional institutions. Yes. And then there's that aspect of the individual family ownership, mm. which is of course governed uh, uh, among people of that class. Mm. So for traditional institutions, uh, until recently, we didn't emphasize their role. Uh, everything was state-led. Uh, state yes. uh, the state was dictating everything. Uh, the Land Act provided you do this, do this, do this. But we didn't emphasize the role that these institutions play. Mm. These institutions play a very vital role. Uh, so it's the first point of reference in settling uh, any disputes that may arise. But for us to reach that point, of course, as I mentioned, we need to amend the law, ensure that we provide for all this. Uh, the role of non-state actors like traditional institutions has mm. to be emphasized in the law that if they are to, to mediate or adjudicate any customary land dispute, mm. that decision will have to be respected mm. by any court in the, in the land or by any authority in the land. So we have to ensure that these institutions are given their proper uh, uh, significance mm. and role to play within uh, the whole customary land registry setting. Mm. Uh, Esther raised that important issue. How will this registry look like? Of course, we already have an idea how a, a land registry look, looks like. It's embedded on the Torrens system of registration. We know that it's a central uh, uh, re repository of information mm. where we record all our transactions, record all land-related uh, uh, transactions and uh, we deposit our certificates there. We mm. Now that we have automated all that information onto the land information system. So a uh, customary land registry will not mm. differ so much from that, except for the reference to the customary rules and norms. Because we are not going to issue a certificate of customary title, which is almost the same as a certificate of freehold, because there will be no, no difference. Mm. The only difference will be in the rules which apply to that land. All right, uh, in, the, in, the, in the respect of culture, as though by call, I'm sure you're going to love this one. <laughs> um, is it possible to have a customer registry that is, um, also, that is actually central, that centralizes culture and land? Is it possible to have a customer registry like that? I'm going to say yes. Yeah. And the reason I'm going to say yes is because the way custom itself is, mm. and the lawyers, we need to think outside the box because we think linear. Um, but for purposes of customary land, we have to think diverse. Um, yes, because customary tenure provides flexibility mm. in how you'd record it, in how you'd register it, and how you'd transfer rights within it, mm. which is different from the other tenure. So we have to be a bit open-minded when we're thinking about it that way. Um, two, the complexity we have is that we are trained. Mm. Abdul said it. We are trained torrents. So things have to be a certain way. But now, <laughs> our mm. constitution tells us be different. Mm. Think customary. Think that the country is composed of different cultures. Even within the same tribe, I'm Teso, but not all Tesos register land the mm. same or document their rights the same way. We are not, actually maybe it's easy because it is more of, um, um, the clan system is strong and well organized. We are not. We are more liberal as a tribe. Mm. Huh? So you'd find differences. But the strength in this customary register mm. is going to be that there are terms and conditions. You know those things we don't read. Terms mm. and conditions apply. Huh? It's going to have terms and conditions. <laughs> and those terms and conditions <laughs> will be set up by a particular clan or a particular group of people that mm. are, are subscribing to that particular title. And that's going to be the beauty about it, that it will be flexible enough in my mind, it should be flexible enough and robust enough 
to allow the entire country to register. And you think it's not wishful thinking for us to even believe that we could have a customer registry that recognizes the centrality of culture and land? Yes, right. I believe that. Mm -hmm. I really do. I am one of those. <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> <laughs> Is it possible to have a customer registry mm. that recognizes that, you know what, culture and land are inseparable? To an extent, mm. it is possible, but some aspects of culture yes. may, what some aspects of culture mm. may not be compatible with registration. Some, not all. Because elites and culture are never at par. So. No, you know, <laughs> under <laughs> customary customary ownership, yes. most cultures, mm -hmm. land belongs to the dead, mm -hmm. the living, yes. and the unborn. Mm. Now, under registration, there must be certainty as mm. to who owns yes. this land. Mm. Such that whoever is dealing with the register, whoever is dealing with the, the person mm. or organization which is registered, will know that I'm dealing with this and mm. I stop here. Now, when you bring in the unborn, who will be and <laughs> who will come in 50 years <laughs> down the road? <laughs> I know Esther is not happy with me. <laughs> <laughs> but, <laughs> but yes, some aspects of culture. But I just brought that mm, as an example. Mm. But it's good that these people get regist registered mm. so that they get security. Mm. Such that no one will ever come waving a certificate of freehold title. Mm. Because they will say, we own this land customarily, and we also have a certificate of title. Mm. So the certificate of title of customary ownership should be state mm. guaranteed. Yeah, yes. Yeah? Yeah. As to the extent of who will be embedded in that certificate is what we have to think about. Mm. Esther, you and I <laughs> have to think a lot about <laughs> that, because that's where we agree. That unborn mm. and the dead, mm. that is... That is my contention. Uh, and also the issue of the clan. Yes. <laughs> uh, you know, for you to register an entity, it must be recognized under the law. Mm. So some of these things, the rules, as Esther said, mm. are flexible, but they should also conform mm -hmm. to, the, to, the, to the rules of registration. Mm -hmm. We cannot register a whole clan mm. on a certificate. Mm. It has to be down to a, a, a specific entity. Okay, I do see Esther by co raising her hand. <laughs> she has a contestation. That, that be, oh, before, before she comes in, <laughs> I, saw, I saw it to mention oh, go that, ahead. that uh, okay, of course, yeah. there are customs which we shall not tolerate, Indeed. Uh, customs which discriminate against women, mm. against True. children. Yes. And uh, of course, we need, we need to document the customs mm. and put them as conditions on the title. I hear you. But some, 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 if they are inconsistent with our ideals mm. under the Constitution, mm. we shall not be able to... Elites on culture, they, they don't really mix. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's the vital. I, I'm going to go back to what Sarah said about Milo Land. She went okay. back to, to 1900, Sarah. Indeed. Mm. When Milo Land was registered as such, mm. think about it and think about the Kabaka ship land and... Mm all the Bataka lands. The one official estate and the private estate. clan lands mm. and is in the official estate that it's held in perpetuity for the mm. unborn Muganda mm. and for the dead one as well. Indeed. If you really think about it, that's the notion of what mm. it is in terms of communality. Meaning at this point you, you might have a Ugandan who is saying this land was left for me by my dead uncle who was, who was a king or whatever in some kingdom at some no, point. No, but for the official estate, yes. for it's for the institution of the All right. Yes, but also that's yeah, how the yeah. clans function. Yes. For mm. those who have clans, that's how clans function. So meaning we cannot because do away clan, with the issue of culture. No, you can't mm. because a clan is supposed to make land available mm. for whoever needs it at particular I points see. of time T. Yes. And so it means that whoever is in that within that clan, for those who have those clans, it means that you have user rights and not full ownership rights. Mm -hmm, huh? mm -hmm. So the clan remains the entity that holds this thing called land. Right? Mm. But as we say, we are still cracking it. So, <laughs> but I have my very... <laughs> 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 okay, it's she, possible. I really think it is possible. Yeah. Except f w uh, the, the thing that I really hope and pray mm. and appeal to my kinsmen and women... <laughs> is that the issues of gender equality must be addressed. Indeed. We cannot keep hiding behind Women culture. Women are not allowed to own land. We, and Go ahead, that's another issue. Exactly, mm. so we must, that, that at least we must agree mm. that it's, it's not going to, mm. to pass um, and that women must have equal rights to whatever it is, whether use rights or ownership rights with the men. Uh, is that, that I don't have... Uh, we, we can't expedite no that, compromise. We can't expedite <laughs> that process anywhere during the customer registration process. 
of trying to ascertain how many women are owning land vis-a-vis -vis how many men are owning land and how do we fill the gap? Yes, right now, is that a conversation we can have? land, we have uh, only about, is it now a 23%? It's now a 23%, mm, 23 All right. of the registered land. Mm. Huh? Of, of the 100% of that which is registered, yes. it's only 23%. Mm. And that dynamic has to change. Mm. That statistic has to change. Exactly. But on mm. the other mm. hand, mm. where <coughs> we have piloted, where they have piloted mm. uh, customary registration mm. and also adjudicated freehold, it is surprising that after sensitization, many people are accepted to be registered mm. on the titles as spouses, mm. husband and wife. So I think that the, the trend is changing. Mm. People accept mm. Mindset accepting. Mindset change. Mm. Yes, there's a mind change that mm. once it is for the family, once it belongs to me mm. as a wife, there's no reason why my husband should not be mm. there. The truth, the, tr the vice versa should also apply. Mm. Uh, let's let's talk about the steps that need to be done to ensure that we actually do establish this customer registry, Sarah Kulata. What needs to be done? In 1900, mm. when there was a change in the customer ownership mm. then, it took eight years for the first title to be issued. The I first remember. title was mm. issued in 1908. Mm. This time around, <coughs> the constitution made customer ownership uh, an ownership in its own right, but we have not issued a certificate of customary title, mm. 26 years down the road. Mm. But government must come in because to issue a certificate of title, one, we have to ascertain the rights. We have to know that the person or persons that have this land are the rightful owners. They have not excluded others. We have to do adjudication and then recordation. When it comes to titling, mm. there must be service. Mm. And survey has to be either, should we use the one which is accurate to the millimeter point mm. or fit for purpose? Mm. No more guesswork. Mm. Mm. No. Yes. The ant hills and everything. <laughs> <laughs> no more use of shrubs. No, 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 because yes. it has to be surveyed mm. scientifically. Indeed. So we have to do the, right, the ascertaining of rights, demarcation, adjudication. Mm. Under the Land Act, we have the area land committees. They are the first instru the institutions that are supposed to deal with these. These are supposed to be at the parish level, mm -hmm. sub-county level yes, now. Sub -county. Mm -hmm. And because the application is supposed to be done at, to, the, to these committees. However, however, Go ahead. these <laughs> committees are paid by the respective districts. So this is enormous work that the districts will not be able to mm. finalize, to, to pay these committees in order for us to achieve what we mm. want. Government must come in. Like it came in in 1900 and did my land adjudication, demarcation and recordation. Mm. So must it come in now to do it. And we do it systematically. We can start area by area. We go to Gulu, finish Gulu. Mm. Go to the Busoga. government in 1900, mm. Sarah Kulata was actually doing it to steal from the people. On the contrary. Mm. Whoever they, record, the whoever they recorded mm. got a title. Mm. And there was some resistance at the beginning. Of course, the but individuals who got embraced. titles were those but individuals who were going to do the bidding of the British. But on the other hand mm. now, government is saying, mm. we want you, the yes. owner of the land customarily, mm. the occupier and owner of the yes. land, mm. we are recognizing you and we want you to get a document Indeed. of ownership. So that the next person does not expel exactly. you from the land. Exactly. And Amazing. so that you also use that document of ownership for prosperity Indeed. we now have national ids mm. when we started people didn't want to register but mm. now everyone wants to register Indeed. and now everyone knows the value of an id you can't get a bank loan without it so mm. will so will this certificate of customer ownership mm. once they are registered every other bank will be able to give you a loan on that certificate amazing of Sarah Kulata. and uh, Ms. Abduna sir recommendations coming in from the Ministry of Lands Housing and Urban Development on what needs to be done to establish this customer registry yes uh, just to add on to what Ma Madam Sarah said mm. uh, there are certain basics which have to be first put in place mm. one is to map all the customary land all right we cannot operate as if customary land does not exist it exists and it supports so many people in this country mm. through their livelihoods so we have to first map it ensure that uh, it's all demarcated, surveyed, and uh, we have a cadaster which we can rely on to ensure that uh, we have this land uh, s 
ascertained. Mm -hmm. But then, uh, also we need to harmonize the survey methods that we're using. Uh, mm -hmm. Currently, uh, we are using different methods to, to survey Castobale mm -hmm. land. Uh, some are accurate, others are not accurate, mm. as, as, as you mentioned, others Indeed. are rudimentary. Mm. So we need to agree on a uniform standard. Mm. If we're using uh, general boundaries which are fit for purpose, we adopt that. Mm. If we're using specific cadastral surveys, we adopt that. But uh, as government, we have planned in our national development plan for the next five years to survey most of the land in Uganda. We are targeting at least one million titles by the end of the planning period, which mm -hmm. is 2025. So we are putting in place certain uh, measures to ensure that we have all the land in Uganda mm -hmm. captured, at least in the cadaster, before we can embark on creating a registry. You cannot establish a registry unless you have land surveyed. That, that, that's why it was easy in 1900 mm -hmm. to have all the Milo land first surveyed, mm -hmm. then issue is a certificate of title. Which Overly. also took R.C. Allen some it, eight yes, years. Yes, it, it took eight years. It took mm. a long time, but mm. it eventually happened. Mm. If you don't put the basics in, Actually really if you don't do the she groundwork, really mm. if you don't do the groundwork first, mm. you will not you will not issue anything out in the, at the end of the day. That's why 25 years later, as Madame Sarah said, mm. we don't have a certificate of customer title because mm. some of the basics we have not yet put them in. But mm. if we put all the basics in, we survey all the land, we ensure that all the institutions are, are, are in place, like the area land committees, the district land boards are supported, and all that requires certain infrastructure and funding to, to go with it, so that all these things can be done. And finally, um, we have a land governance expert at the International <laughs> Intergovernment Authority on Development. L let's hear it, SO by call. Recommendations from IGAD. Uh, one, mm. uh, this whole issue of uh, documentation of customary rights mm. is a continental-wide move now uh, because we are finding that uh, Africa is, one, the food basket of the world. Indeed, we are. Two, land grabs are increasing. Whether we want it or not, people are going to come on speculative purchase and buying land for um, farming, large scale. So uh, those who are not yet interested in ascertaining their rights you will remain marginalized. So it's just one of those things that all countries are working so hard to do with different degrees of success. <coughs> but the effort is being made across the region to register. But I also want to say that um, in Uganda, LandNet is playing a critical role in having mm. this debate mm. going. Mm. And so people get engaged, have your voices heard, send in your comments, clans, ichu, ichu where I come from, please show up. And let your voice be heard as we prepare for the customary land registry. Thank you. And many thanks to you three for having made the time to speak to us. Esther Obaiko, the IGED land governance expert. And also, we did have Abdul Nasser Olekwa. He is the principal lands officer at the Ministry of Lands, Housing and Urban Development. And Sara Kula Tavasangwa, a private land consultant. Many thanks for having made the time to speak to NTV Uganda, to speak to Ugandans who are grappling with this question of customary land in Uganda. Thanks for having Thank us. You. Thank you. And indeed, to you who has been watching this show since we began midday, many things have been made it a point to watch this, emerging issues when it comes to customary land registration. My name is Romy Busik, and of course, NTV at One is coming up shortly. Good afternoon.